here to make a new type of news. New insights, new style and new topics every day. We are News Generation. Making news just for you. It's March 21st here in Seoul. I'm Shin Yeun, and you're watching News Generation. Joining me in the studio is Cheska Dainhong. Happy Thursday, everyone. Happy Thursday, and Im sang -yeop. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Now, both are here to speak on behalf of people in their 20s and 30s. As usual, let's start with our news feed, which covers different hashtags and news items that have been trending on social media over the past 24 hours. China is becoming a popular destination for more Koreans. The Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport on Tuesday found that there were 1.01 million travelers from Korea to China last month. This was nearly 10 times the amount recorded in March of 2023. It's also the first time since the outbreak of COVID in the year 2020 that the number of those flying to China exceeded the 1 million mark. Moving on, the number of married couples last year here in Korea bounced back up for the first time in 12 years, but the total number still remained below 20,000 for the third year straight. Experts also believe that we may have seen a slight soar only because couples had decided to postpone or delay their weddings during the pandemic. Statistics Korea on Tuesday released relevant stats and pointed to how one out of 10 marriages were between international couples. Compared to last year, 18.3% more Koreans married a foreigner. And lastly, Paris has decided to stop 300,000 condoms at the Olympic Village for the upcoming Summer Games, set to kick off from July. The French director of the Olympic Village, Laurent Michaud, said they are preparing for 14,250 residents. This comes as officials have decided to lift the intimacy ban that had been in place for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. And back in 2020, officials tried to prevent the spread of COVID-19 by asking athletes to limit their physical contact with one another. They asked them to keep about six and a half feet distance at all times, except when necessary, for instance, like on the field. This put a temporary halt to a years long tradition of athletes being provided with condoms at the Olympics. And it all started from the 1988 Seoul Games. At the time, the Olympics started giving out condoms to raise awareness for HIV and AIDS. Now here in the studio, what did you guys guys think about this news and the fact that it's being held here in Paris from July and we're seeing a break of the long tradition come back. Right. It's a very interesting segment, <laughs> to be honest. And first, I thought, why would athletes need condoms? Mm. But I soon realized that most of these players are in their late teens or in their early mm. 20s. Uh, so I think the Paris Olympic Committee is being really considerate about the sex life of these athletes. Mm -hmm. And just like you said, the uh, disease issues like HIV and AIDS can be really serious if they spread, especially during the global events. Uh, but for now, I think and I wish the Paris Olympic Committee would uh, care more about the uh, facilities uh, where these players stay. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the beds where uh, the athletes have to uh, sleep during the night. And I think it was on the video just mm -hmm. a few mm -hmm. seconds ago. Uh, there was a recent post on social media that went viral that these beds are made of cardboard. Mm -hmm. And I believe this issue was already uh, debatable and uh, stroked a great controversy during the Tokyo Olympics. Right. The committee insists that these cardboard beds uh, are for the sake of environmental issues and because they are made of uh, environmental friendly uh, materials, it will uh, con contribute to the Earth's protection. Mm -hmm. So for now, I just wish that all the Korean national players uh, will enjoy their games during mm -hmm. the Paris Olympic uh, and stay healthy. And in order for them to do that, you mentioned a great point. I mm -hmm. do think the Paris Olympic Committee members do need to think about better infrastructure for the athletes there. Now, Cheska, what do you think about this years long tradition coming back into practice in Paris? You know, just to add a little bit of humor, I did ask my Parisian friends what they thought about the news and they said, and I'm quoting them quite directly, they said, quote, of course, it's false. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess, I mean, it speaks for itself. Uh, Paris is a city of love and freedom. Yes. But one of the things that, you know, on a more serious note, I do uh, kind of respect that the committee is trying to respect the freedom and the choices that these athletes make. And just to add on to Sang Yeok, I all I wish for the athlete is for them to be healthy, mm -hmm. safe, and really enjoy the game. And one other thing that my friends noted was that because, you know, Paris has so much crime going on, when the Olympics starts, there will be a flood of tourists. Mm. So they did add a word of caution for anyone traveling to be extra, extra careful. And extra careful. And we still have around three months left to go, three to four months, actually, as it will kick off towards 
the end of July, so fingers crossed that all preparations go as planned. Now switching gears to our main discussion topic of the day, here on NewsGen we've mentioned how our generation seems to be seeing cars differently. While some may find it to be the most convenient method of transport, some eco-friendly young adults out there are trying to use cars less often and instead promote public transit options. And others, though, might use cars as a way to still flaunt their wealth, and we're going to be reading into various automobile-related data from our generation to find out more. Before that, I would like to ask our panelists whether they drove here to work themselves or any other options out there. Sure. Um, I think I am pretty good in terms of representing the other side of those mm -hmm. non-drivers. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have my license, but I haven't driven in so long that it actually expired. Really? Yes. <laughs> so I do need to get a new one. Uh -huh. But I, for the work, I cabbed all the way. I'm a cabbie all the way. And I do it for two reasons. One, it's both time efficient and energy efficient. And when I say energy efficient, I'm not even just talking about the automobile itself, but personal energy. Mm -hmm. As we all know, Seoul is has crazy rush hour traffic. Exactly. Um, both on the road and people traffic. Yep. So being in the cab sort of saves that energy for me to mm -hmm. prepare for the day. The other thing is when I'm in the cab, I usually sit back, read, meditate, or sometimes just keep my eye closed mm. to prepare for the day. So because I have this wonderful driver that is taking me to where I need to yeah. go, all I need to do is sit back and just prepare. I'm quite envious of you though, because I get quite car sick I know. by riding the car. <laughs> but I do agree that riding a cab does seem to be very time efficient, yeah. but it does take a toll on your wallet. It does. It, it really does. does. Mm -hmm. Now, what about you, Sangu? Did you drive here to work? Yeah, I drove to Arirang this morning, uh, but actually I can totally relate to those who don't own a car mm -hmm. uh, like Cheska. And I was able to see oftentimes the rush hours in Seoul uh, is really crazy and the traffic jam is mm -hmm. really uh, congested. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was a time uh, when it took me like almost almost three hours from Gangnam Station to Yoido. And as you know, uh, going from Seoul to Tokyo also takes three hours. So <laughs> I thought to myself, I sh should have just gone to Tokyo instead of to Yoido. But uh, I, actually, I'm not that kind of person who always uh, use my car whenever mm -hmm. I go, uh, because uh, like when I go to business trips in rural areas or far away from capital district, mm -hmm. I often take uh, express trains or highway bus. Mm -hmm. I see. And I think we're going to be now looking at the different figures or stats that really encapsulate how our generation perceives driving or having our own cars these days. So, Cheska, why don't you walk us through any interesting figures or recent surveys that you found? Yeah, I was also curious curious too because it seems like the cars are never running out of the road. Uh -uh. There just seems to be more cars packed in the street. Mm -hmm. So let's see exactly how the MZOs are reacting to getting cars and license. Let's take a look at the screen. Now interestingly enough, throughout the past decades or so, there have been a decrease in MZOs getting their license. As we can see from the top, the USA to UK and to South Korea, the numbers are actually decreasing. Mm -hmm. But what I want to actually point out is that for South Korea, even though it has been a decade, the proportion that has decreased isn't a huge change. Mm -hmm. So it's from about 13.8 to about 11%, I would say. So even though many households have more than one car nowadays, because there is a decrease, it could indicate some changes in people's attitude towards owning or maintaining a car. But in my personal opinion, it wasn't such a huge drop. It wasn't such a huge drop, but we did see a slight drop, we did, yes. which is pointing to right. something. Mm -hmm. Sanya, are there any other interesting findings? So I, what I noticed uh, mm -hmm. several years ago on the roads uh, was that many MZers are were actually uh, using and spending excessively to buy foreign-made luxurious mm. automobiles that goes beyond their uh, budget. And it was a trend among the youth uh, to buy these kind of foreign-made automobiles to brag about their wealth. Mm -hmm, right. And this term, the car poor, mm -hmm. uh, was actually newly coined back then. Uh, it was uh, satirically criticizing um, those who tried to spend all their assets into mm -hmm. buying luxurious cars uh, whereas they couldn't uh, even pay their rents. But this trend soon died out and many younger generations are now switching uh, their stance and heading for domestic-made cars. It turned out that the in import volume of foreign-made automobiles this January mm -hmm. was the lowest after seven years. So we can see that there used to be a high prioritization of imported foreign luxury cars, but now it seems like a lot of millennials and Gen Z, though we have to analyze the reason mm -hmm. why, they're looking for more affordable options 
games and a lot more domestic cars. Yes. Now, any yeah. other interesting stats? Yeah, another interesting thing to note is the purchasing pattern. So mm -hmm. I remember back in the States, everyone would drive either used cars or their parents' car. Now, that hasn't been the norm here in South Korea. However, if we take a look at the screen, in a recent survey, it showed that almost 80% of MZs are actually willing to purchase used cars, which is a huge increase and kind of a very big figure. Mm, and I think that adds weight to what Sang Yup just said as well. Before, I think a lot of people with the terms like car poor being so prevalent, mm -hmm. a lot of people would use cars as a way to flaunt their wealth mm -hmm. or exhibit how much money they have mm -hmm. or how successful they could be. Right. But now I think we're going into more reasonable consumption patterns. Mm -hmm. Now, why do you think then a growing number of young people aren't buying as much cars, particularly foreign imported <laughs> cars or luxury cars or new cars. Right. Why do you think that? You know, I think it has to do with certain characteristics of mm. MZers. One, we have discussed it here on the studio multiple times, but MZers are known to be quite radically involved in terms of partaking in pressing global issues mostly involving environmental mm. issues. So we are known to be you know, more present and right. sort of taking concrete actions. So I think when it comes to purchasing cars, obviously it, it affects the environment in multiple ways. So either they refrain from purchasing or switch to a hybrid or electric cars. Mm. Another thing is financial prudence, which we also talked a lot about in the studio. m are very smart when it comes to spending matters. And one of the things is we saw um, in the survey that more than 80% more than eighty are willing to purchase as used exactly. cars, meaning that they do understand that car is a depreciating com commodity, mm -hmm. meaning once you purchase it, the value just keeps dropping. Maybe it's because we're becoming wiser consumers. We could be. I hope so. I, I really hope, hope we so. are. <laughs> what about you, Sangye? What are your thoughts? Well, it's all about price tag mm -hmm. and inflation has been going up uh, these days and cars are no exception. And by the way, if you own a car, then there are like additional costs that follows. Yes. Uh, there's like the gas uh, fees that you have to pay depending on your driving range mm -hmm. and also if your cars break down then you would have to pay like more than 400 US dollars for repairment and if your car is a foreign made automobile then the number will obviously double. Mm -hmm. Now here in Seoul uh, there are not that many parking spaces so if you're going to meet your friends uh, then you have to go to like big big department stores exactly. or shopping malls with a big and wide parking spaces. But here, again, you ha you will be faced with uh, parking lot uh, charges and who knows how much mm. that's going to be depending on Ridiculously your parking Ridiculously high hours. charges. Ridiculously high. <laughs> so, uh, so whenever I go to Seoul, uh, central Seoul areas, I don't usually take my cars. Mm. So uh, like you can see, all the prices are really uh, soaring up crazy if you buy cars. and. And just like you mentioned, because many MZers are now becoming wise consumers, they prefer not to buy cars and rather spend on those money on their uh, rental fees or living costs. Right. I think they're better investing in themselves. Mm -hmm. And to add one little anecdote myself, I bought my own car three years back. And I must say, it is very convenient. Mm -hmm. I do have that guilt of harming the environment, <laughs> which I'm really looking to forward to once I'm um, remedying one day. Mm -hmm. But also, I think it's the cost that's really burdensome. But also, public transport is just so accessible I here in just Seoul. Say. I mean, especially when you want to have a drink with your friends, mm. you're not, you're not going to use your car, mm. you no. can't drive. So you ride the bus or the subway. And we mentioned a few times on NewsGen that Seoul has one of the best public it transport really does. options, really especially with the climate card nowadays. Mm. It's mm. even more affordable. I love it. Which is why I think it attributes to why a growing number of young adults from our generation are refraining from buying mm. cars. Now, to add a global perspective, we asked our viewers whether they think it's necessary to buy their own car or not. So take a look at the screen to find Find out what three of them had to share with us. Let's start with Shinobu Senu, still somewhat mandatory in America, even in major cities. My commute to one place I frequently vi visit by a car is around 25 minutes, but by bus, train, or walking, it's an hour and 10. Sean said, to be honest, it's not definitely necessary to have a private car if you live in the capital city where you can easily access public transport anywhere and any time, but you'll certainly need your own car where transportation is not available. Doina said, having a car is being independent. I have a few cars, but I don't drive now because of the oil price. It's expensive to have a car. I prefer taxis, buses, and trains. Now, to add even a bit more global perspective, we're going to include a fellow millennial living in the States who's also driving in our talks.
We're now going to turn to a fellow millennial who's currently driving over in the States. It's Kim Ayong, who's a PhD student living in Atlanta and also knows what it's like to own a car in Korea. Welcome, Ayong. Hi, it's lovely to be here. All right, so Ayong, how do most millennials and Gen Z in Atlanta move about these days? I would say that predominantly it's by car. Um, if you don't have a car, you would go around um, with the Uber or you would hitch a ride from a friend. But um, more often than not, the buses don't come as often. So it's usually relying on those two services. I see. And you know, here in Korea, there is a very great public transportation, but I have experienced living in New York mm. and LA where car is almost a necessity. So I'm also curious about your input. Are a growing number of your peers or friends in the States thinking of not buying a car or even getting a license? And if so, if not, could you explain? So what I'm thinking of is that most of the time, it seems possible that we would, it's better to have a car, but um, I initially, when I first came over from the States, to the States, I thought it was um, better to kind of walk around and bike. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I got a lot of warnings from my friends. Um, <laughs> I was walking around and my friend told me that I, I was had a death wish and if I was biking <laughs> on the streets that it was really dangerous. Um, so most, at least in Atlanta, I think there's a growing number of people, especially within the PhD program, that realize the more years you're spending here, it's more probable that you will want to get a car mm. because it's a worthy investment. Okay, Ayan, so from your perspective, uh, do you think we'll be seeing fewer drivers from now on? And what would you like to see as we move forward? I think we will be seeing, I think it depends on the place and what's happening within that ge um, geographical region at the time. But having come to the States, I realized that maybe the um, carless world is is actually a lot farther off than mm. I had initially hoped in, that while I was living in Seoul, because it is difficult to get around. Um, and there's also the added kind of political, like policy um, aspect of um, structural racism that has stemmed um, a lot of kind of inhibitions in mm -hmm. having public transportation because of issues of segregation and raising um, under income communities to build interstates. Um, with all of those issues in mind that uh, not there not being public transportation is a that is an it is an agenda that is serving a particular kind of demographic. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that in mind, it is hopeful that we can possibly move towards more um, public transportation because we would like to save the polar bears. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm kind of sitting on a um, bittersweet note. I know, because we do have to see better infrastructure, as you mentioned. I think the biggest difference between Seoul and Atlanta is the geographical proximity of everything mm. here. It's so easy for us to access different entertainment facilities or companies by public transport. But as you mentioned, in some parts of the world, that's not the case. So hopefully we'll see some development. But in the meantime, thank you so much, Ayong. It was a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, and as an ending note for our generation, uh, News Generations episode today, how would you guys like to see our generation view cars from now on? You know, speaking with Ayong and sharing our exper experiences, I do believe that car can be a necessity mm. in some instances, in some regions. So I do believe that owning a car should remain a necessity. And my hope is, my personal hope is, that it doesn't cross too much into it being luxury because as we talked about it, it does have an effect on the environment and it is also a depreciating commodity. So. It is. Is. Mm -hmm. For sure. What about you, Sangyo? So I definitely think that uh, many MZers will not try to buy their cars in the future, but there will be some point in your life where you will really need a car of your own, mm -hmm. uh, especially depending on your job. So because I work as a freelancer, I often have business meetings in rural areas mm -hmm. where it is uh, unaccessible to public transport. So if you are someone working in the sales department, you will definitely need a car of your own. And these days, the Korean government is uh, giving out 
incentives and subsidies yeah. to those who own electric vehicles or hydrogen cars. So that could be another option for you. Exactly. And as we mention every single time when we talk about different consumption patterns from our generation, I think the key takeaway note is for you to be wise about it, do enough research, mm -hmm. weigh out all your options out there, and at the end of the day, do whatever suits you the best. Now, in the meantime, we'll be here every day from 9.30 to 10 a.m. Korea time, bringing you more topics young people are talking about. Special thanks to Cheska Dai Hong. Pleasure is always mine. Thank you. And Im sang -yong. Thank you very much. All right. And thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. We are News Generation. Generation.